What is going on, Wolfpack? Savage here. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down and analyzing a viewer submitted quads gameplay. And I really think that producing great teamwork is the best way to win a match in trios or quads. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel today, join the Wolfpack, and also leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 2,000 likes. And as always, if you guys are tired of playing by yourself and you're looking for other teammates, make sure you join our Discord community and utilize the Looking for Groups pages to your advantage but in this video we're gonna be focusing specifically on how to increase your kill count now high kill counts isn't just about having the best aim and the best accuracy it's also about not wasting time you want to quickly go from kill to kill to kill and hopefully this video will enlighten you guys on how to do that but without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the video i gotta clean my glasses off real quick i was getting shit on by dmrs all day so there's a little bit of tear residue on my glasses lens we got to get this shit off real fast so i can see properly all right, looks like we're dropping downtown. I'm not a huge fan of downtown. However, it's not a bad spot to go to. And it looks like there's gonna be a lot of people going here as well. So it's, it's gonna be a pretty good hot drop, I think. Not to mention bank. Definite because all the money here. Grab a gun on the rooftop. I love the fact. And a lot of you newer players don't know this. This is gonna be one of those moments where a lot of you guys are gonna be looking at me like, Savage, I already knew that, you stupid asshole. But for those of you that are newer to the game and haven't found out this information yet, I want you guys to notice how he picked up an LMG and he didn't have to go through that entire animation bullshit and waste the time. He literally wide wide the gun, which canceled the reload animation, and he was ready and able to absolutely blow these two assholes away. All right. Got RPGs being shot at us. Sick. I guess he's on the roof, I would imagine. There's a guy floating in right there. I might be able to beam him out the air. Look at all this shit. Look at all this, guys. We got people slow falling in parachutes too. And, I, and I'm trying to beam this message across to the world. Stop floating in your parachute for a long period of time. Turn off auto parachute, drop, and right before you're about to hit the ground, pull your chute. You may break your ankles a couple times. Doesn't mean you turn it back on. It means you just get better at pulling the chute at the right moment. This shit right here, if we weren't an immediate threat, if someone wouldn't have shot at us with a rocket launcher, we could have killed the guy to our left-hand side relatively easy. Maybe not the guy back there by the building because of the gun we have, but if anyone has a sniper, it's an easy kill as well. Stop allowing yourself to sit here and float right over compounds because you're going to get blitzed out the sky. Also, shameless plug number one. Don't forget to purchase sneak energy. This shit is the truth. All right, we got two enemies in front of us. Now, instead of pushing down there, I would definitely scan the area first. Homeboys, come. don't do that. This, this is the shit. Bro, I'm going to take a little kid, bro. We literally just finished talking about slow parachuting in, and here this guy is pulling a chute and just flying around like it's somebody in business. Then he's surprised how he got shot out of the air. It's not that hard. It really isn't that hard. Once you get good with your aim and accuracy, guess what? Easy beams. But now we... Yeah, he heard it. It's not that serious. It's just a game. You'll be all right. All right, but here we have the squad over here, and I don't know if it's one or two or not, because we saw two guys on the outside. There's a guy right here. They may be separated. It may be two teams. Just be ready for it. Fuck. All right, so that was a squad wipe. Was... Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, whenever I kill people, the guys that I kill, I don't know if it's because they're mostly streamers and tryhards and sweats, but they never have any death chat. The only time I hear death comms are when I'm spectating you guys. No one ever talks in my lobbies. It was like people are mute or some shit. All right, so now we're in a position where we have $6,100. It looks like they're looking for money, so I'm assuming someone dropped the sack somewhere uh, that probably would have been able to give us our loadout. Green did pick up a bounty that happened to be right next to him. Also, when you're running from place to place, make sure you're slide canceling, and because you have an LMG in your hand, swap to your pistol. You want to try to move when you're in the open as fast as possible. The fact that we're kind of slowing down and it looks like he's actually getting shot at right now. We just put ourselves in a vulnerable position and just to be kind of slow walking with an LMG. I definitely would switch to my pistol and start and start sprinting and slide canceling for sure. That way we can get our teammate up and then we can successfully get to safety ourselves. <laughs> All right, I'm not sure exactly where we're getting shot from. I guess the rooftop purple mark the rooftop further back to the 69. Um, this position now where we got to plate up before we peek before we do anything the first thing you want to do is plate up because if you do happen to peek and whole boy's got a sniper or a dmr you're dead and this is another reason why i'm not a huge fan of downtown one because there's a lot of shit here uh and two because you you will run the chance of putting yourself between multiple teams at any given point 
I'm not sure exactly how many teams are fighting at once. There's a guy on top of the roof lane prone right here. Right here. There we go. This should be an easy kill. Now, we have a guy camping on this rooftop. What can you do? Well, you can get to the other roof of the build next to it and then look down and or jump down on the enemy and get the kill. There's many ways you can contest it. Whether you want to waste your time or not is completely up to you. And that's what I kind of want to talk about is wasting time. They're not really wasting time right now because they're in constant action. And that's a great way to get high kill games. You want to have constant action. But the moment of fight looks like it's going to take a little long. Your best, your best bet is to bail off and either push them from a different angle and or go hunt down another enemy. And again, because there's a team on the tower in front of us and a team and a team on the rooftop behind us, I don't like the fact that we're sitting right here in the middle of the open, able to get shot from the back and the front. Now, I do like the fact that we have a lot of UAVs going up in the air. You always want to have UAV active if possible. If you're sitting on a shit ton of money, always have one live, always have one sitting um, in your backpack. Make sure you guys are always using UAVs to your advantage, as well as bounties. Whenever there's a downtime of UAVs, go for a bounty or even while UAVs up in the air. We could go up here and try to challenge them, but again, because of, you know, different angles and different camping spots, this guy could be on a staircase, this good guy could be laying prone watching a zip line, this guy could be in a corner watching the staircase. I don't feel too comfortable with pushing it. But luckily for us, uh, Big Mara out was jumping around like this is Fortnite. I think he, lo think he lo loaded the wrong game on accident. All right, MP goes ahead and gets the team wipe over there. So whatever the team they were fighting originally is dead. Our guy, I think, was by himself. Um, and he's dead as well. And here we are, heart beating on the rooftop. I guess looking for the guy that we just killed's team. But I, again, I don't believe he had any teammates near him just based on the way he was playing. Lame prone on rooftops and bunny hopping around like it's Fortnite. Weird, weird gameplay. Oh, I just seen that. <laughs> Stop pulling your parachutes out and floating for 30 seconds. If you cry about getting shot out the sky, stop doing it! Oh my god, bro. I, I already know what y'all are gonna say. That's Big Mar, that's the dude we just killed. Came right back for his shit. I know what you guys are saying in the comments right now. I can already feel the keyboards going ham sandwich. What are y'all saying? Savage, this is a bot lobby! Guys, y'all y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta get these habits of, of just pulling your parachute. That's like a pet peeve of mine that I fucking despise seeing. But we do need to get to our team for sure. We need to help our teammate out in whatever fight they're in because the faster you can win a fight, the more fights you can pick. Win the fight, move on to the next. Win that fight, move on to the next. The longer that we're in this tit for tat, getting down, getting res, getting down, getting res, and we're not getting kills, the longer the fight's gonna take, the longer the fight takes, the less amount of kills we're gonna get in the match. With saying that, however, you don't wanna be super aggressive. There are times you gotta slow it down. And I'm not sure exactly what the team's position is right now as far as how they're fighting or who they're fighting because we can't see what's going on. But again, we need to be working our way to our teammate right now and helping them win this fight instead of looting. We really don't need loot right now. We have money as a squad. We have enough money to get two more UAVs in if necessary. We need to focus on the fight, get it one, that way we can move out. We have a great angle on the rooftop though, which is awesome. I don't know if we can make that float. If we get the down on this rooftop, you think you guys think we can make that float? It's gonna be close. You're gonna have to long parachute, which I tell you guys don't do, right? There's a down. Now all we gotta do right now is bait. That's it. Just just wait for his teammate to come out and go for the res. That's all you gotta do. Now you gotta be careful. You don't want to sit up on the ledge too long because again you're vulnerable. From other from other areas and other rooftops so i'm not a huge fan of sitting up there the entire time but for some reason nobody is challenging us nobody's even trying to shoot at us i don't think anyone knows we're up here i do like the fact that you check your map pretty often as well that's a very underutilized tactic the map is there for a reason make sure you guys are pulling it up and always keeping your eyes on what's around you especially if you have a uav in there or if you hear gunshots, whenever I hear gunshots at all, I'll pull up my mini map to see if people are popping up on the mini map and then ping where they're at. A lot of viewers that send me games um, don't ever pull up their map oh, one time. That and that's drastic. And that's a huge mistake because, again, you can see so much on your map of what's going on because not everyone has ghost on. In fact, the majority of the players on the server usually die without ghost. There's another guy long parachute. <laughs> 
All right, so here we are gonna help our team in this fight. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Could be a 2v4. We're not, we really have no idea what the hell's going on. Got to the right hand side. Things above you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. What did you think was gonna happen, fam? You're laying on a staircase. All right, so here we are now. Um, 10 kills. We have enough money to get you AV for sure, but I would also pick up a bounty. I would fly from this rooftop, go to the rooftop across, grab the bounty that's sitting right here. Meanwhile, my teammates take my money and go ahead and buy UAV also. I'd like to have two in the air, especially since we're downtown and the edge of the circle is gonna be around us. We're gonna have a lot of people rotating in from the hangars area, from train station. It's about to get popping. So you guys wanna get a UAV up, you guys wanna get a bounty up, and kind of hit two birds with one stone. I got my gold. Give me money, give me money. Because I'm rotating all the burger, 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 burger. I uh, like the call outs for sure. So when you're playing as a squad, guys, and I know I know it sounds like a broken record when I talk about teamwork, but I see it no, no, no. too often. So many times oh, people are just not utilizing teamwork to their advantage. They'll end up shooting at the enemy, trying to get the kill themselves, and they won't actually call out the enemy's location. You guys need to start calling out where the enemies are at before you start shooting, ping them, especially that way we can get a live ping if we don't see exactly what you're talking about. And stop putting yourself in a bad position trying to run over people. That guy there literally tried to run over an enemy or run over our teammate, I should say. And then he ran to a pole. Look at the parachutes! All right, but here we are going up to the high ground. We got our DMR, so if we can maintain the high ground, we can actually provide a little bit of suppressive fire and cover on our team. I'm not sure exactly what the angle is going to be. We got a good one, actually. Look at this guy. This guy right here should know exactly where we're at, but still he's sitting on the rooftop completely exposed. Remember, guys, pay attention to your hit indicator. The enemy there literally wasn't paying attention to shit, and that's why he got downed. I think homeboy's actually getting the res off. So in a position like this when you're shooting a helicopter, I definitely don't recommend sitting on a ledge, especially when you just down a guy to your right-hand side. You reveal your position, you put your body on the ledge, revealing it to the enemy just downed and his teammate that's probably up there getting the res off right now. Um, again, I'd probably be more focused on the guy down and baiting his body more than the helicopter. But if you want to focus on the chopper, use the ledge as a protection and uh, then shoot at the helicopter for sure. The whole point of fighting is you want to try to fight one enemy at a time. You never want to put yourself in a position where you're going to have to fight multiple teams at the same time. Here we go. Long parachute and asshole. No, no, not yet. One sec. He's bottom of the building on the left-hand side where the archway is. Still there. It's got to follow the tracers. Where, where? So I'm not sure exactly what the hell this enemy team is doing. I'm going to be honest. It actually looks like it's multiple teams. Again, I don't mind us peeking over the ledge, but you kind of want to like keep your body moving at least. That way when you get shot, you can at least jump off the ledge and be protected by it. Okay, there we go. Again, putting yourself on a ledge just exposes you to everything around you. You need to be very careful because if you go down right now, your team's not going to be able to get you. You will die. You don't have a self-res. Um, the chance of your team being able to survive in the gas, going up the staircase, going up the um, elevator shaft. Elevator shaft might work, but it's going to be a very close call. All right, where's his girlfriend? You know there's got to be another one here. Yeah, I'm going to get cookie, AV. Gas is moving in. Cook. New safe zone All right, so the safe zone's now moving across the ravine and going to be going towards the farmland side. At least that's what it looks like it's going to do. All right, so we have enemies shooting at us um, somewhere to the north. And, of course, we have a lot of people in downtown because it's on the edge of the gas. One thing you want to avoid doing in this position, though, is picking a necessary fight. I don't want, you to, I don't want to tell you guys to run away from fights ever. But we need to be worrying about our position right now more than anything. We have 43 seconds before the circle moves out. The last thing we want to do is engage in the enemy squad and they clap in the back because we're out in the open and we're in a bad position. Like right now, for instance, because the guy was already shooting us from the north, we kind of knew that was going to happen if we engaged anybody else. And that's exactly what happened. Luckily, we were near cover and we were able to dive to it. But unfortunately, now we're down on plates and we still need to move out of this position into an even worse position. 
the ravine's going to be a huge cluster. Um, I feel a lot better with a vehicle for sure. Hopefully, the four wheeler above us, the four wheeler to our south actually looks like it's glitched. So, hopefully, we can take that safely and get across the ravine. Pushing across the ravine normally sucks ass. Pushing across the there's a there goes the four wheeler. Pushing across the ravine with DMRs. <laughs> I'm gonna back straight off the game, not give a shit. All right, right now, again, you want to get UAV. Be very fast with it, though, because this buy station's in a very bad spot, especially when Dick Farm done uh, parachute on top of the crane right there across to the southeast. All right, so let's look at the map and let's look where enemies are at, right? So we know there's going to be people downtown. We've already fought with them. We, they shot us in the back. We, we were shooting at them. They shot us in the back. We know there's people over here, and we know there's people over here, but they're not showing up on UAV, so we know there's people behind us. Now, look where we have to push to. This is why I hate ravines for sure. Um, we have teams camping right here. We have teams camp in port. We have a guy in the middle of the ravine that's going to have an angle on us. So that's, that's a lot of people with beautiful vision on us. Because you know damn well all these guys are going to be looking this way to gatekeep us for sure. This is why I said vehicles almost a must. It's not an impossible push, but it's all just luck of the draw. Hopefully no one's watching you guys when you're pushing out in the open because you will die. With no cover, if they shoot at you with a DMR, you will die. All right, as far as pushing across, you, you just got to play it with luck honestly again hopefully no one's looking at you it's a very bad position to be in as far as orange and purple are concerned i wouldn't be focused on on fighting anybody downtown right now i'd rather you guys get safe and go to where we just ping this guy out on blue mark who's sitting here i think by himself if we get to this area guess what then we can gatekeep everybody crossing the ravine from a safer position or even maybe rotate up the hill to the north get some more kills get on the high ground and still be in a position to gatekeep these assholes all right, homeboy decided to bail out. He's running away from us, and we're hawking him down. Beautiful. That's the team up right there. Now we can kind of rotate up to the hill to our north, get a little bit better position. I think there's a team um, further to the 30 as well. They may have run back to safety. It's probably what they have done. But now because we're in this area, we can still gatekeep the enemies. And even though we're gatekeeping, you don't want to completely abandon the windmill area because you know damn well there's going to be enemies there. And lo and behold... Our teammate got a nice little ping off. Y'all were able to get the double down. There's another one going for the res. That should be an easy beam as well. And now we're essentially gatekeeping possibly two teams. Instead of just sitting along the edge of the circle, they kind of pushed out a little bit because they knew they had a nice ridge here. They had a nice angle on the enemies and they were able to get another team wipe. So I like that. They didn't just sit in the building and, and wait. They actually played a little bit aggressive, played against the edge of the circle and they were able to wipe one team and get a couple more kills on top of that as well. But... Because that guy we just executed wasn't an instant. We know he has got squad members around here as well. Orange went ahead and he's pinging some buildings that he believes the enemy's in. So now it's our opportunity to work in and get another couple kills. All right, I, I love that too, guys. Again, with teamwork, they're marking everything. Whether they see him or not, they mark it if they think he's there. Or they mark it if they find him in a heartbeat. They mark it if they see him. They, they mark it just to allow their teammates to give them some kind of like heads up. <laughs> now, luckily, there was only one enemy up there. If there were two enemies or multiple enemies, we probably both would have went down. Um, but we did bulldoze through and we were able to get the kill. So it ended up working out. But just be very careful pushing staircases together because you can body block your own teammate and get them killed, which is, I think, what happened, honestly. I think our teammate is trying to back out of it, and he couldn't because we were right there. All right, so what you want to avoid, especially so early in the game, is camping in attics like this. Um, attics like this, people think it's a good spot because we have to come up staircases, but at the end of the day, if we're half as decent with our shots, we can bulldoze through like we just did. Four of us go up an attic and we can beam you guys one at a time. That's exactly what happened. So if you guys are newer players and y'all find yourselves in attics a lot or in upper stories a lot, get out of that habit. Don't ever overstay your welcome for more than a couple of seconds. I like to just go from compound to compound to compound to building to building to building and kind of just work the circle. You'll never see me just post it up for more than a handful of seconds. It's kind of what this team's doing too. They're playing for kills. They're trying to get a high kill game. Um, they do drop 63 kills as a squad in this gameplay. I mean, this is why, because they're never in one spot for more than a few seconds. They sit here and they'll hold an angle while they're fighting a team. But once the team's wiped, once the fight's done, they move on to the next spot. I like the fact that he's sitting there watching his back as well while they're in the middle of this fight. Um, this is a very ballsy push. 
with the cluster strike coming in, honestly. Very ballsy push. One shot. Hey, guys, can you guys go res me? Oh, I down one, I down one. There's one more, there's one more, there's one more. There's still one more guy, though. He could still be in the building. We haven't really cleared the bottom floor yet. This guy could still be in the building. And here we have another incident where the team freezes up. And instead of playing the walls, instead of playing the outside of the building, what do they do? They sit in attic and they camp. If you want to sit around a building, that's fine, I guess. But if you're going to do, you got to play it correctly, especially in quads. There's no reason for all of you guys to be in one clustered area. One of you guys should be on the bottom floor watching the north side. Another one playing the wall on the south side, watching the south side. Because we should never have been able to jump off the mountaintop uncontested while in our parachute without at least getting shot. At the same time, when we landed on the ground, we never should have been able to push towards the building without getting shot. That if you want to camp in a building, that's fine, but there's ways to do it to be more efficient. Putting yourselves in one area like the attic and allowing the enemy team to spam nades and C4 and stuns and coming through different angles is just it's just crazy. So get out of this habit. Should I get rid of the sniper? Oh, plates right here. Plates right here. All right, we're sitting on 18 kills. We have 16, I'm sorry, 17 enemies remaining. Uh, we can buy our homeboy back. We should probably, oh, he's got Gulag. Never mind. We got to wait. And this is the moment we kind of have to sit here. You don't want to leave the buy station too early uh, and then have our dude die in the Gulag. And we have to come all the way back and get him again. So he's got to play it slow and wait for the Gulag to happen. Now, because our teammate dropped down just now, I wouldn't really leave him yet. Because remember, we killed three guys. We didn't squad wipe, which means they probably have some Gulags. There may be that other enemy there still. And the last thing you want to do is leave your teammate who just got back vulnerable to die. And lo and behold, there's a guy. Now, whether he was there before or he just landed, it uh, doesn't matter. We kind of need to play a little bit safer. You don't all have to stand around him, but I definitely would have left one of us near a teammate to hopefully um, win the fight and save his ass. But that was a team wipe, so it had to have been the guy laying prone in the bathroom, doing some stupid shit, I'm sure. Now, here we are. Green engaging an enemy to the southeast side. This is where it gets a little... It's a little tricky, right? All right, when it comes to formula endings, it gets a little finicky. It gets a little a little bit pain in the ass because you're trying to fight campers and you're going to be in the open like we are now, right? And we run the risk of getting shot from other enemies. Good shit. We were able to get two downs and then our teammate go up the staircase and clean them up. But again, it's because they put themselves in position to camp one little bitty room. What's going to happen? You're going to get spammed through walls. You're going to get shot out the window and you're going to have nades thrown at you. So for the third time in the past 30 seconds, stop oh camping God. in attics. Now, with that being said, once this circle gets a little bit smaller, farmland, again, is, is finicky. It's weird. You're going to have to probably grab an attic or at least a building and just play and wait for the circle to rotate. But that's for later on in the video. All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Nine enemies left, and we have a full squad. It looks like we may be the only full squad left. I would almost bank on it. So we should be feeling pretty good right now. We have a nice little area. We've been cleaning out teams. We also have next circle favor. Um, so you want to get in a good position. You kind of want to be relatively together. I wouldn't mind a two and two split because, again, I don't like clustering everybody up in one house. Um, so if we want to sit in one house or on the rooftop and another team on the other one, I definitely would recommend that strategy. But notice how instead of sitting in the house, they're playing the edge of the houses. They're playing the fence line. They're staying a little bit spread out, but still close together, right? And look at this. Purple's watching in one whole direction. Our back is safe because we just cleared it, and it's also with the gas. There's a huge ledge right here, so no one's coming up that way. Green's watching the south side. Blue's watching the southwest side. Um, we're just watching different angles. I absolutely love that. Well, we're not watching shit right now. We're about to, though. <laughs> we're actually watching a fence. But I love the fact that we're, we're spreading ourselves out and, it's and again, remaining close together. And look how much of the circle we've dominated now. We've literally dominated more than 25% of the circle with four teams left. We should be able to run the shit up this game. And that's why minimap's so important. They haven't said call outs. They haven't said, hey, you go this way, you go this way. They just know if green's watching this direction, I'm going to watch this direction. If purple's watching this one, I'm going to watch this one. I'll make sure that we're watching every direction. Now that green's getting pushed, we need to start getting closer, though. I don't like the fact we're still keeping our distance. I want to get closer and help green out. Because you know damn well, what do people do? They love camping houses, bro. They love it so much. We need to get in there and help him out while he's getting the res off. Oh, unfortunately, we lose out, but we should be able to get this easy kill because, again, he's in combat. 
and of course the enemy's plates were broken now i will say once orange died green should have kind of held back a little bit and waited for us to get in there instead of going up there and kind of funneling in because basically what happens they just took out two of our teammates one at a time no one pushed them together no one pushed as a team and unfortunately cost them their lives um so now in this position where we went from being the only full team to it being a possible or well, it being a 2v1v1 but ladies and gentlemen, here we are in a 2v1 situation. We should dominate this circle. We have visual and everything. We're still safe. You don't want to sit in a window for too long, however, because again, snipers and DMRs will screw you up faster than you can even realize you're dead. We want to keep our eyes on everything. I like how he's scanning the window, going from side to side, trying to look at every angle, seeing if, seeing if he can catch an enemy, trying to rotate into the zone. While one of us is looking this way, I would definitely... Okay, there we go. Purple's working his way back to the other window to watch for anybody rotating in. I like that. Right, there's the enemy right there. Should be a solo. Right there. Or he is a solo. I'd keep watching that side because he's probably going to try to get out of there. He's not safe. This kid is screwed. And again, this is the exact reason why I tell you guys don't play the edge of the gas for too long. Don't overstay your welcome. If he would have rotated across to these buildings while we were in this fight with the kid in the attic that we're now dominating... He would be safe, but because he was so scared, little Timmy's just sitting there shivering in his boots, terrified to move, and it's going to cost him his life in any way. Positions like this, when you're on the edge of the circle and you're not safe and you know you're not safe, you need to rotate while other teams are fighting. Rest in peace, little Timmy boy. So now we're in a 2v1. GG's. One thing you can do in this position is just wait. Just wait. Because there's four other buildings safe right now, and you know damn well... He's camping one of them for sure, right? So it's just a waiting game to see where the gas goes. Fortunately for us, it does favor us, but not for long. We're going to have to get out of here soon. All right, I like the precision strike for sure. Absolutely awesome. Just be very careful it doesn't come down to you. There's the enemy right there. <laughs> get wrecked. GG's! Hendrix, brother, thank you for submitting the gameplay, bro. I really love to see the aggression and kind of rotating. My favorite part of the gameplay, honestly, was the fact that you guys didn't post up for more than a couple seconds, minus the end of the game. But again, you really had to with that situation. Farmland endings, downtown endings, any ending that's a cluster of buildings where it's the last circle, the second last circle. Sometimes you just got to slow down your gameplay, play a little bit passive, get out of the aggressive mindset, and just play for the win. That's exactly what we did. I love to see how y'all's gameplay and mood changed throughout the game. They were very aggressive until the mid. Then once the mid came, y'all started focusing on the smart rotations. Then once you got safe, you got even more aggressive. And then once it came to end game again, y'all slowed it down and y'all played it safe. 63 kill game as a squad. I'd love to see that. But Wolfpack, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, again, let's get this video to 2,000 likes. Also, subscribe. We are closing in on 100,000 subscribers. And as always, you have a good one. And until next time, good luck in Warzone. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out one of these two bangers right here. And as always, subscribe by clicking that button over my left-hand shoulder. You have a good one. And until next time, keep on improving.